Okay, back at last. It's been a while. Um, just been busy. But anyway, I've decided I'm going to get the engine running. Um, it's just the engine's assembled, gearbox assembled. It's just got a couple of bolts holding the frame. That's about it. Strapped down. I can't remember where I left off with this, but this is uh, loose. So I need to sort that out. It's just held on by one bolt in the way. So I need to just open that up and have a quick look inside, make sure we're okay. In the two years I was mucking around, mouse chewed the wiring loom, which is a bit of a nuisance. So I need to check that as well. Right, here's inside the generator. You can see down there, just about that I've folded the springs over just to get it in. So once they're in, we can push the um, carbon blocks down and then clip the spring in on top and it should keep them tight. It's the old capacitor in there. I haven't checked that yet or fiddled with it, so we'll just try it and see what happens. See if it sparks a bit much. If it does, we'll swap it over, swap, get a new condenser. I've got a few of these spare, just in case this one doesn't work. Points obviously down there. I'll have a good look at the faces, just check those as well. Right, stick it on. Okay, so that's bolted down. Next up, we're going to wire in the generator. Couldn't be any easier. It's got nice numbers on it, like 964. And it could just correspond to the colours on here. Red, green, black. Just literally poke them in, do the screws up. Oops, sorry there. Poke them in the holes, do the screw up. Numbers in there. I always put a bit of tip X on mine so you can see the numbers better. Just for future reference, really. So next up, we're going to set the ignition timing. This is obviously the advance and retard mechanism. Here's your points here, which open and let the spark occur. So the first thing we need to do is go back to the piston position. Okay, so find top dead center. There's a few ways to do this, but if you remember from the earlier videos, um, I had the sense to put some neodymium magnets into the flywheel at various pis piston positions and and then i knocked out this little box here specifically for this ks600 and in there i put hall effect sensor to detect those rotating um, and all you do is rotate the engine slightly and it picks up the maximum magnetic field strength which will be marked there at top dead center at 164. Um, all i need to do now is just rotate the engine very slightly until it hits 164, piston might go off the screen on this because it's not calibrated at 100%, but it's pretty accurate. Here we go. It's just flashing out, that's near enough because this is way too accurate for what you'd actually need. So it's hovering around late 150s, 160. And that's it, that's all we need to set it. So an absolute piece of cake. Right, let's move on. We need to set it back from top dead center by 10 millimeters on the standard cam. The easiest way to do this I like or find is with one of these, which is a control rod off a radio controlled aircraft. It's only about 1.5 mil. Because it's so thin and strong, you can lay it in there and it sits absolutely perfectly flat. And I think the thicker the, the object is you put in there, the more of an angle you get and slightly less accuracy. So once we've done that, we just go along with a bit of Tipex, which I've got in my other hand here. There we go. Get down in there. Just put a little tiny blob. Just use something as a marker. I'm going to do it there. The runniest Tipex ever. But there we go. I do. And um, I'm going to go from the front. There you go. Front line of that. So all I need to do is just mark now with a tape measure. 10 mil on it and then wind the piston backwards and then we should then set the ignition timing from there there you go so it's back in the hole so we just need now need to wind it backwards until the other piece of Tipex is in line with that piece of cast aluminium. Okay, so there you can see it. We're now on the second mark, first one out, so we're back by 10 mil. Now we just need to set the points gap. Right, so there are obviously the points up in there. We're going to worry about cleaning them all and everything later. Um, but for the moment, we're just going to set the gap. So this is the point where they should actually open. 
and create the spark. So to set the gap, all we need to do is open up the points there and insert the smallest feeler, feeler gauge into there, loosen this screw, and then this is like a canvas one. Adjust that until it just, the, the feeler gauge, you can just pull it out so it's just touching. And then nip that one back up tight. When we start it, we'll go for um, full retard over there, a bit safer. Don't want this trying to fire backwards, for instance. Okay, now I'm just gonna go and check the wiring. Okay, let's run through the wiring. So uh, I don't have the ignition switch fitted. So um, I've just knocked up the wiring, bypassing all that. So just run through how it works. Obviously got an earth lead there. Um, two positive leads coming out of the battery. Going around here. <clears throat> um, one of them down into the generator to provide power for that. And then up to here and this is the ouch. this is the positive which will go on to the blue and that will provide electricity for the ignition coil going over to here and then obviously through the coil out to the negative the black which goes down to the generator over here which basically goes into the points which will break of course, and once that breaks, uh, causing the flux to collapse and create the spark. Uh, once the generator is running, the green will become live. So when you first connect this over here, it's a little knock up six volt bulb. Let me up it on there. So that's positive. So essentially the positive is running down both cables on both wires into the generator. Now, once the generator becomes live it starts generating electricity of course and then this is no longer has a route to earth and therefore the bulb goes out which is why the bulb um, lights when it's not generating okay so that's all seems to be wired all we need to do now is put the fuel on i've sorted the carburetor i'll go and have a look around this side had a few problems with the float bulb because it had a hole in it and it sunk I fixed that <clears throat> possibly in a separate video I might insert it in here so there I just need to screw the top on that and then we'll connect up uh, some fuel next up we need to set up the um, rockers and the cylinder heads over here so let's get these off and have a look so we left it <laughs> there isn't even one in there okay so that's why we check everything of course it's been two years nearly, so we're looking this side to see where we were. Stiff to get off for some reason, which suggests it's not fitted right. Get that off. Okie dokie. Alright, so I need to go and find that first. Now I've got a box of these, so if you recall a while back, the one that was fitted for it had a nice weld job so there you go it's that way up in it so to change that so let's find the right one and the right one has got the adjusting screw on the inside so let's have a look on that one that's the baby there all right so we're going to use this one a quick check over and obviously we've got to um fit the roller the needle roller bearings back inside it as well. It's gonna do that a bit of wear on there, look. Right, do that, that's what we need, this bit here. All the needles, have to clean it up first because it's been kicking around for a couple of years. And uh, we put that back together. So have a quick look at these before we clean them up. Obviously the needles are all sticky now, they've got nice thick, thick sticky grease on it, but there's quite a lot of grit in it. So we clean those up, put new grease on. Nice and thick, like I said, sticking back on there. But while we're here, it's worth having a quick look at these. So these are the bronze um, packers, if you like, which help uh, they lift up the um, the bearing. And you'll notice that on one of them, the slot in the middle is a slot, and the other one, the hole in the middle is a hole. And the reason why these are helped, they, they're, they're, they're like that, to stop lateral float, like this, of the actual rocker. 
So that washer there, steel, and it's deliberately designed to just about go straight over the end of that, which then rubs on there. And then you can use those slots when they're worn to just push those in a bit tighter and it just stops not quite nicely the lateral wobble on there. And of course that makes the engine a lot quieter as well. You hear these things slashing around and doesn't do the engine any good at all. So clean them up now and I put these uh, rollers back in and then we're going to shove it back in the engine. Okay, so that's back in and I've used these obviously as I described a minute ago to adjust the float on it and also these washers down there. And so if we look at this one, which is now done, it's got very little float on it at all, nice and quiet. So it'll rock nicely without bouncing around up and down. And if I go and look at the other side, around here, you'll see what I mean. To one that has not been done, so this one has not been adjusted. You can see it's got a lot of float on it. It's gonna make a hell of a noise when the engine runs. It'll still run like that, but obviously, it's far from ideal. Frustratingly, when I was putting the greasing the needle rollers, I lost one and I can't find it anywhere, which is a bit frustrating. Probably got stuck to something with a bit of grease or something, I don't know. But um, they're 2.3 mil steel of some kind, so I just have to make a new one. Anyway, so now I need to go around and do all of these. So I'm gonna quickly whip around and do that now before we move on to the next bit. Okay, so that's all done. And up next is the valve and intake clearances down here. Um, when I was putting these on, uh, only one of them required washer this side. This one is not that worn, so it didn't require any. Just a slight adjustment on these bronze things. This one I haven't tightened yet. Um, but first, before we do that, we need to set the uh, piston to top dead centre so that the valves are at crossover. So all I need to do is crank the engine over with the kickstart a couple of times, which I've just done, which then gives us a maximum reading here of 151. Let's see if I can zoom in a bit. I'm sure I can. There we go. Hopefully you can see that. And then all I need to do is rotate the engine very, very gently, which I'll do over here off of the drive shaft. And there we go. Till it's a 151, 52. There we go. Right, so we know the piston is at top dead centre. I just want to see which side is that crossover there. I suspect it's typical. It's probably the other side which I think it is, is by the looks of the position is exhaust valve. So I need to rotate it again by one more rotation just to get the piston back up and the valves are crossover on this side. Okay, so I've got that at the top dead centre, but there is a problem. So I'm going to plug that for a minute. Let that go flat, move out of the way, uh, and zoom back out. And this, it appears that this rocker here is slightly different to the rest of them. Um, there doesn't seem to be, even though they're at um, crossover, there doesn't seem to be any play in it. And just looking at the side there, it's a slightly different type, slightly thicker. So, yeah. so I think that's probably off of a KS750 or some other kind of Zundap. So I'm going to have to take that off now and just swap it over for, luckily I bought a box of spare ones of these just in case. So I'm going to whip that off now. Okay, so that's fixed. So happy now. We've got all of the clearances done, um, fuel connected, uh, wiring's done, timing set, oil in the engine. I think we're almost ready to go. So um, up next, in the next video, I'm going to try and start this beast.